What's up power fans and YouTube, it's your boy Nino and I'm back with another power video. In this video, I'll be talking about how Marvin made a huge mistake when he was killing Sally and the consequences of his errors. The loose end Howard left behind when he shot Detective Berg and as a result, the reason Adina is suddenly concerned about Berg's issue and many more. I'll also touch on Ronnie and his first kill. And of course, if you are new to my channel, you are welcome. Kindly hit the subscribe button, like, share, leave your thoughts in the comment section below. Now let's get straight into the topics. Marvin to me was the MVP of the second episode of Raising Canaan season 3. He has proven that even gangsters or drug dealers have heart and compassion even in the most difficult times. He had several chances to kill Sally, but he waited for Sally to leave the baby before taking the shots. Now, in every decision, there is always a consequence. Raquel told Marvin not to miss and that if he misses, they will all be in trouble. In an attempt not to miss the shot, Marvin exposed himself in the process and if care is not taken, Marvin might go down for killing Sally. Now, there is something we haven't paid attention to and that might stick on Marvin as evidence for being the shooter. Sally's wife proposed they take pictures before they leave, so he handed the child and then he was posing for picture before Marvin stepped in to shoot. Now, because it was during the daytime, there was no need to see flash from the camera to know when the photographer took her shots. Now, the danger is there is a possibility of Marvin being photographed by the camera lady. If you look closely, he was in the frame behind them and even though he was wearing a cap, his profile will show and identifying him might not be extremely difficult. Now, if my guess is right, then Marvin is likely to appear in Sally's shot and from his profile view. Any form of image evidence would then trace back to Raquel and her brothers, leaving Marvin as the suspect to the murder. Mind you, the FBI was interested in Sally's safety, so I believe there will be an investigation into his murder case. For the FBI to get a huge intel like that on Sally's life, it is obvious that they would like to open some kind of investigation into which of his people took him out. The only problem now is the photographer. Other than that, Marvin did a good job and he didn't miss as Raquel instructed. But the question is, is there a loose end in his execution? My answer is yes. And that is the photographer. Now, Marvin might have done a clean job without getting noticed, but if there is going to be a twist to this situation for him to end up in jail, then trust me, the photographer's anger comes in handy with Marvin in the picture aiming to shoot Sally. Now, if things play this way, Marvin might be looking at the orange suit, but let me know what you also think in the comment section below. A situation like this might bring Lulu back to working with his sister and probably find a way to get Marvin out of trouble. Now, let's move on to Adina, Beck's girlfriend. I think she'll find herself in some troubles. Now, let's take note of this. The captain told Howard to bring any debt he finds on Beck, and I think Howard will use their relationship act against her. You know those days, it wasn't a thing like it is now to have a lesbian partner. So it is more like one of Beck's scandalous secrets that even the father would like it to remain under the carpet. Now, before Beck died, she told Howard her girlfriend broke up with her. Now that Howard has seen her at the memorial and the captain said if he has found something he should tell him, my second guess is that Howard might try to pin Beck's suicide story on her girlfriend as the main reason why she killed herself. He can then say that Beck shot herself because of her suspension and broken heart from Adina. Now, the question is, why has Adina all of a sudden developed interest in Berg's case when she clearly stated that she doesn't want to have anything to do with it and she is going to focus on her sick mother? Now, this is my theory. What if Berg informed Adina that night that she was going to meet up with Howard just to prove herself and she told Adina she was going to record the conversation as well and turns out that she is dead and the recorder wasn't found on her as well? What if that was the reason she is trying to get the attention of Beck's father and the captain? This means Howard still has Adina as a problem to deal with. Then again, what if the gun Beck had that night was for Adina? And we all saw Howard taking Beck's gun and left his own in her hand as the suicide weapon. Because we all remember Beck's gun was taken from her, so she might have gotten this one from someone or somewhere. So what if for some reasons she was desperately trying to prove herself to Adina and she needed her gun for protection and also took Adina's recorder for the meetup to get evidence. Then it means only Adina believes Burke didn't commit suicide and it's a matter of how she can prove it without implicating herself or making matters worse for the case. 
Because question we should be asking is why would Adina suddenly think Beck was right? Why would she now be seeing some sense in Beck's quest to prove Howard wasn't who he really is? For me, I think Adina was privy to something about the meetup between Berg and Howard. And for Berg to come out dead with an unknown gun and the missing tape recorder, it makes Adina's suspicion 100% to her. Only that she doesn't have any ears to listen to her theory now. Because for whatever reason, Adina must now ignore her sick mother and start tracing the root cause of Berg's death. Must be a very good enough reason. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, let's touch on Raquel and Kanan's sinking relationship. And as usual, Raquel is still lying to Kanan. I think this car drive was an opportunity for her to have been honest with Kanan for once, but she again messed it all up with her lies. Kanan himself told Howard to do something about Beck, so there was no point for Raquel to lie to Kanan about the suicide thing, not forgetting she said the same thing about Scrap. So clearly, we cannot see the reason why Kanan bonded very well with Tariq and why Kanan see himself in Tariq. Kanan has always been lied to as much as Tariq. Honesty has been one missing item in both their lives. Howard said he will handle her. It is obvious that Kanan knows his father is in on it, so there was no point for Raquel to lie to Kanan about Beck again. And for me, I felt that was the best opportunity for Raquel to have scored some points with Kanan. But as usual, how our parents are good at lying to their kids. But let me know what you also think in the comment section below. Now, still on Howard, he needs to be worried about this new task force moving in. If Adina slips her way through to the task force, there will be a problem for Howard with Detective Berg's murder. And I hope Howard disposed that tape he took from the car very well before it becomes an evidence. Now, let's move on to Ronnie. I don't know what you think, but I think Ronnie here is on some different psyche. I also think he just got his first mark, which is this bouncer who was trying to provoke him. In the first episode when he was introduced, it was said that he was wild and fucked up. But we are yet to see that part of him and I believe he is going to start with this bouncer right here. Now, Ronnie, I think, is on some different behavior that even Unique doesn't really know his brother anymore. And you can see the writers are communicating fear through Unique's baby mama from the time he came back home. It's another way of throwing light on the possible danger that comes with hanging around with Ronnie and messing up with him at the same time. It was also established that his stay at Unique's place is temporary, so there is definitely going to be a reason that will make Unique decide that his brother got to go find his own place. Because for an ex convict sitting in front of a TV set that is off at night, simply tells us that Ronnie sleeps with his eyes wide open or probably sleeps with one eye open. For me, I think the guy's mind is off into the second world and he seems to be vigilant around himself. He doesn't seem to even trust the walls of the house. But then let me know what you also think in the comment section about Ronnie and his weird behaviors. Now to conclude, I noticed something I want to find out from you guys. Who is Uncle Sam? Could this guy here be Kenya's brother? If you pay attention to their conversation, Jukebox Tone seems as though she's familiar with the man. So anyone with an idea who he might be, you should drop it in the comment section below. If you like this video, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like, share, most importantly, leave your thoughts in the comment section. Catch you in my next video. It's your boy Nino. Thanks for watching.